chapter 34 of Job. Now, in the last part of chapter 33, in verse 31, it says, Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me. This is Elihu talking. Hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify thee. So we're finding here that Elihu is saying, if you have anything to say, say it now. Because I want to see you justified. This is what he's saying. In verse 33, If not, hearken unto me. Hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. So he's saying, if you don't have anything to say, then listen to what I have to say. This is what Elihu is saying. So in chapter 34, he continues. In verse 2, Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me. Ye that have knowledge, for the ear trieth words as the mouth tastes meat. Let us choose to us judgment, meaning let's choose what is right. Let us know among ourselves what is good. What Elihu is saying is, let us check this out. Let's see what's right. In verse 5, for Job hath said, now Elihu is saying, Job hath said, I am righteous. He's saying that Job has said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. And in verse 7, what man is like, what man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity, and walketh with wicked men? Elihu, up to here has pretty much said a lot of right things but now he's starting to accuse Job just like the three friends of his in verse 9 for he has said it profiteth a man nothing that he should delight himself with God Job didn't say that he's saying this is what Job said Job didn't say that about himself he said it, Job said it but he was talking about the wicked people back I forgot what chapter it was in but back when Job said it he did say it, but he didn't say it about himself. He was saying it, that about wicked people. But right here, Elihu is saying that you said it, that he said it about himself. Verse 10. Therefore, hearken unto me, ye men of understanding, for be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. Elihu is like Job. He's saying that, Things are, like I said, Job said a lot of true things. And then some things, he would say something very positive about the Lord, and then the next verse, he'd blow it. He'd say something that was in the flesh. And Elihu is, is, is doing the same thing. Right here, this is very true. God does not do wickedness, and he doesn't have sin. Okay, this is true. But Elihu is going to be like Job, and he's going to make statements that are in the flesh. Verse 11. For the work of man shall he render unto him, and causes every man to find according to his ways. Right here, he's saying, he's talking about what you sow is what you're going to weep. As we all know, the, the Lord says that through the Bible. What you sow is what you're going to weep. And that's what he's saying right here in this verse 11. And then verse 12, Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, Neither will the Almighty pervert judgment, which we've already talked about this. We know this already. In verse 13, Who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? What he's saying right here is nobody has given the earth to the Lord. Nobody gave the earth to the Lord. Say here, God created the earth. Nobody gave it to him. He created it, and we all know that. He created the heavens and the earth. And we're going to find out some other things that he created that might surprise you. Okay, I don't know if it's going to be tonight or next Wednesday. So if I don't do it tonight, you can be like, God, what is that? Who is that? Am I going to have to wait till next Wednesday? <laughs> Verse 14. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. He's saying that if God was to take his spirit out of the world, that we would die and we would go back to the ground where we came from. And that would be it. That's what he's saying right here in these verses. In verse 16, If now thou hast understanding, hear this, 
hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? So he's telling Job here, if the Lord was to hate righteousness, how could he keep in order his kingdom? If the Lord, this is what he's saying, if the Lord hated governing, which means his order, if he, if he hated that, how could he keep order in his kingdom? Same thing, a man is the head of the house, biblically. Now, this is the same thing here. If a man is not walking with the Lord, how is he going to have righteous order in his house? It's the same thing to what is being said here about God. If God didn't have nothing but righteous and hated right things, which that's what it says, then how could he have order in his kingdom? Same thing in, in, the, in the house, a Christian home. If the man doesn't have order in his house, if he doesn't walk with the Lord, then he doesn't have order in his house. For him to be the head of the house, he better know the word of God. Because he is responsible for everything that goes on in that house. Everything. Be it right or be it wrong. If it's wrong, he's accountable for it. Even though his wife did it, he's accountable for it. Do you hear me? Even though his wife did it, and I gave two examples. Adam and Eve. Eve took the fruit. Eve was listening to the devil. Adam did not listen to the devil. The devil did not deceive Adam. He deceived Eve and gave Eve the fruit. Eve ate of the fruit, and then he, she gave it to Adam. Adam. But when the, word, when the words of the devil was coming out, he was speaking to Eve. He was not speaking to Adam. The wife took the fruit and said, Here, and Adam ate. But then when the Lord came looking for Adam, he didn't come looking for Eve. He said, Adam, where are you? He went to the man. Same thing with uh, Abraham and Sarah. God told Abraham that Sarah was going to have a baby. And she was an old age. And when Abraham told his wife, you're, God said you're going to have a child, she laughed about it because like, she was very old in age. So she thought it was funny. But God came to Abraham and he said, why did your wife laugh? He didn't go to the wife. He didn't go to Eve. He didn't go to Sarah. He went to the man and said, why did this happen? So men, be very serious on your walk with the Lord because the Lord will hold us accountable. He holds me accountable for my wife right there for what she does and what she doesn't do. And he holds me accountable if we were still have children here. I would be very accountable for them too. If they don't know the word of God, it's my fault. You understand me? So this is mainly for the men. And it says, he also says, how can, how can you blame God who is the most just? At the end of the verse. This is what he's telling Job. How can you blame God? Because that's what Job's been doing. Is how can you blame God when he's the most just? Verse 18. Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, or to princes, ye are ungodly? What are you saying here? Would you tell a king or a prince that they were wrong, or they were, you know, that they were wicked? You know, back then, kings just all they had to do was say, Cut his head off, it was off. Kings, that, they just had to speak it. Uh, you know, kings have more power than presidents. Presidents got to go through all this house and everything. Kings, they just said it and it was done. So he's what he's saying right here. Would you would you say this to the wicked, to the to the uh, kings who could chop off your head? Don't you fear God more than that? Because they can chop off your head and you're dead. But God can make you dead spiritually, spiritually, soul and spirit can die. And when you have a, when God kills the soul and the spirit, it's not really he that kills it. We kill our own. Cuz it's up to us, right? It's up to us if we want to live for the Lord. So it's not a, him killing it, but this is what happens which is what the Lord has said. If you do not accept me, then this is what this is what awaits you. Verse 19. How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princesses, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, for they all are the work of his hands. How could you blame God for these things? When God doesn't look at how rich you are or how poor you are. So how can you blame him? You know, 
you thinking he's doing this because you're poor or you're rich. God deals the same with everyone. And we know that. He loves everybody the same and he deals the same with everyone. Because to the Lord, we all look the same. There's no colors. There's no colors in God's eyes. And there is no rich and poor. In God's eyes, he sees this. And all hearts look the same. This is what he looks at. And that's what he's telling them right here. Verse 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away. And the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of men, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. Now this is a good verse right here. He's saying that God sees everything. Everything. And there's no place you can hide, especially for the wicked. You know, there's wicked people out there who believe when you die you're just dead. No. The Lord knows where you're at. And everybody, everybody, everybody is going to live forever. Everyone is. It just depends where you're going to go. So there's no darkness and there's no shadow of death where you can just die and just say, I'm just going to die and I'm going to go right here in the ground and just that's where I'm going to stay. Uh -uh. You can't hide from the Lord. He will find you. Verse 23. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. And what that's saying there is, <clears throat> we don't set a time when God can, for God to judge us. God his, has his time. And for, let me say this, for a Christian, his judgment is right then and there. When, when, a born, when a lost person accepts the Lord, becomes born again, the Lord has just judged them to be right, to be justified. His judgment is not on judgment day there is a judgment day but judgment day for the born again Christian is to see where you're going in heaven because there's different levels in heaven and there's going to be rewards in heaven so on judgment day that's going to be what the Lord's going to judge us on the lost people their judgment is going to be this is why you're going here the heck the lake of fire but our judgment day is not okay we're going to go stand before the Lord and see if we're saved or not not for us. As soon as you give your heart to the Lord, as soon as you do that, as soon as you're born again, truly born again, the Lord has just stamped you with the approval that you are now justified. You were born, you, were, you, were, you got your seal to heaven. All right? You understand me? So we're not waiting for a judgment to see if we're going to heaven. We already got it. Verse 24. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. What it says here is God can scatter men of greatness and, they, and he can put others in their place. God can put you where you should go, okay? Verse 25. Therefore he knoweth their works and he overturneth them in the, in the night so that they are destroyed. <clears throat> he striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turn back from him and would not consider any of his ways. So he's telling Job that God sees everything that the wicked do. For being wicked, he will but destroy them. We know that already. He's going to destroy the wicked because they've turned their back on the Lord. This is when you witness to somebody, you give them the plan of salvation, what it takes, what you need to do to be born again. All right, when you tell them that and they say, I'm not ready or you know, they just don't want to do it. Well, that's turning their back on the Lord. Because that's the Lord speaking to them. Because we, every, every Christian that's born again has the ministry of reconciliation. Meaning, our ministry, every Christian has the ministry of telling people about the Lord. When, he's, when, you, when that lost person turns away, what he's saying right here is they, turn, they have turned their back on the Lord. Because when you're witness to somebody, you, sp you should be doing it in the Spirit. You're not turning, they're not turning their back on us. We're just delivering the message. They're turning their back on the Lord, God Almighty. And he's, but he's telling Job here, you're just like the wicked. All this he's saying, you're just like the wicked. That's why I'm saying, Eli, you, it's starting to sound like his three friends. Verse 28. 
so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. He tells Job, because they are evil to others, that God hears their cry. God hears the, the cry of those who cry to him. Now, there's different kind of crying to the Lord. But right here, he's talking about the poor. He's talking about people who, who, who want the Lord. And things are happening to them, and they're crying out to them. Just like the Jews, when they were in Egypt, they were crying out to the Lord, free us. We're slaves here, free us. They were crying out to the Lord. But there's different kind of crying to the Lord, okay? We're going to see that. Verse 29, When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only. He's saying when God gives you peace, like in Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's what the Lord says. When you have the peace of God, <laughs> you got peace. You when you have the peace of God. But Satan and the trials of, of this world that we go through, they can give you trouble. But if you have the peace of God, because, I mean, Job, even though he's complaining, now he's doing a lot of complaining, but he hasn't cursed him and he hasn't turned away from God. So at the same time he's complaining, I would say that Job has that peace also. He's going through it, but any man who's lost what Job has, I mean, that's going to be hard. I, I don't really know of any man uh, that even can go through that. Lose everything. Like everything. And, and his ten children. Ten children. He didn't take his wife, but his wife turned away from him. So he lost everything. He lost his everything. His health, everything. So he's complaining. You know, I can understand that. But he didn't curse God. He did not curse God. He didn't turn away from God. It's saying also, if God turns from you, if God turns from you, whether he turns from the nation and he has turned away from nations. And I'm telling you what, he's about... If he hasn't already, he's going to turn from this nation also. We're so this this nation here that we live in is wicked. When we're taking everything that has anything to do with the Lord, when we're taking it out of the schools, and God we trust on the on the on, the, on our money, they want to take that out. When you do all this, we're becoming an evil nation. Not becoming, we're there. When they say you can kill babies and it's not murder. God says it's murder. When men can marry men or women marry women, God says that's sin. We're saying it's okay. And when and right here it says, when God turns from you, who can turn him back to you? To them. Who can make him look upon us again? Like I said, in Job, this book of Job, not only does it talk about Job losing everything, but it, a lot, there's a lot of stuff in here that teaches what's going on today. And what we should and shouldn't do. At one time, this country, we, we went to Washington. We saw those monuments of men back then. And the, the, the sayings they had. Oh, these were men of God. You could read those and you could tell these were men of God. But our leaders now, we don't have no leader that, that fears God. Verse 30. That the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. What it's saying here, those who hate God won't take over and ruin people's lives. Verse 31. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. Elihu is telling Job to tell God, I have taken my punishment and I will stop. From here on, I will stop complaining. Verse 32. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. He's telling Job to tell God that if he has sinned, then to show him. To show him what he's done so he could repent and do it no more. So that's why Elihu is telling Job. And there's no problem with this statement. But we don't go to God and say, Lord, if I have sinned. We don't, we don't say, we don't say, if I have sinned. So when we sin and the Holy Spirit shows us that we've sinned, then we don't go to the Lord and say, Lord, if, no, the word is not if. 
We know. The Lord will show us. Okay? Now, there are sins that we do commit and we don't know that we're committing them yet. But when He does show them to us, there's no if about it. When He shows them to you, then you know right then and there it's sin, period. Verse 33. Should it be according to thy mind, He will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not I, therefore speak what thou knowest. Should the Lord change His rules in order to please you? That's what he's telling Job. That's what he's telling Job right here. He's saying, he's saying, if you don't like what I'm saying, tell me. Job, if you don't like what I'm just what I just said, then tell me. Sometimes maybe I should say that in my Bible study. Hey, if you don't like what I'm saying, tell me. Because guess what? I'm going to throw this at you. <laughs> the Word of God. That's why I use nothing but verses. You know, there's some men, they'll read one verse to you, and that's it. For 45 minutes, they preach from one verse. You know, they don't give you other verses. But the Lord has shown me, no, you show them by my words what I'm saying. Don't give them your commentary. Don't give them your opinion. The Lord showed me this a long time ago. And I don't. I got to know that I know that I know that this is from the Lord. Because if I don't, I don't say it. Because the, the Word of God says, I am accountable for what I teach you all. And I take that very serious. Verse 30, no, 34. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. He's saying, let someone tell me if I'm wrong. In verse 35, Job has spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. Bottom line, Elihu is telling Job, you are speaking like a fool. His bottom line is that's what that's what Elihu is telling Job. You're speaking like a fool. There, there is times he did speak like a fool. But Job, remember Job. He is a man of God. Remember, men of God are not perfect. Remember that? But just because we make that statement, that doesn't mean, well, I can mess up because I'm not perfect. No. Because what does God look at? What does God look at? He looks at your heart. He knows if you're playing a game. He knows. You might fool us. You might fool your friends and everything, family, whatever, the preacher. You might fool them, but you're not going to fool the Lord. So why, do you, why are we going to try to fool men if we can't fool the Lord? And that's the, one we, that's the one we should be looking at. Verse 36. My desire is that Job may be tired unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. This is not a good statement from Elihu. He wants Job to be fully punished. Fully punished for the way he spoke to the Lord as a wicked man. That's what Elihu is saying there. Now, we as Christians, is that what we're supposed to say? What's, what's the Lord tell us? What does he tell us to do for our enemies? To pray for them, to forgive them, to love them. Just don't sound like he's doing it. He's saying, you need, to be, you need to be fully punished for what you've done. Verse 37, For he had his rebellion unto his son, he clappeth his hands among us, and multiplies his words against God. He's saying, he's telling Job, you, you have added being rebellious. You have shaken your fist to God, is what he's saying. And you are speaking with angry words against him. Now, Job has. He's done this. But please remember, please remember this. He is not cursing God. He's complaining, but he's not cursing God. Just remember that. There is a difference. Okay, let's go on to chapter 35. Verse 1. Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou sayest my righteousness is more than God's? What he's saying here is God has no reason for punishing him. This is what Job, okay? Job, you think you're so right that God shouldn't punish you. This is what he's saying here. Verse 3. For thou sayest, what advantage will it be unto thee? Now he's saying, because you have said, he's telling Job, because you have said, what advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? So Elihu is accusing Job of saying this. Job did say this again, but he said it to the wicked. Now this one, he did in chapter 21, 15. He did say it, 
but he said it unto the wicked, not for himself. So Elihu is he's, he's saying, you have said this, and Job did say it, but Job was not directing it to him. He was directing it to the lost people, okay? He also says, who, he's saying, who is God, and why should we obey him? Why should we obey him? What will we get for being righteous? Okay, this is what he's saying. What are we going to get for being right? So pretty much it's like, what am I going to get out of this? Yeah. Like I've said before, when you, we, whether we get right with the Lord or not, God is God. Period. He is God. No matter how we, uh, what we think or whatever. If our motives are not right, that's our fault. But we shouldn't go to the Lord and say, well, I'll go to the Lord because right here it says, uh, if I tithe, he's going to pour blessings down on me. Yeah, that's why. I'll go to the Lord for that. Well, your motives are wrong. You're not going to the Lord because, you're not accepting the Lord because you love him. You're accepting the Lord because you, you read that he's going to pour blessings on you if you tithe. Well, that's the wrong motive. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 4. I will answer thee, and thy comp compassion with thee. Look unto the heavens, and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinneth, what doest thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thy hand? Thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art. Which he's telling Job. Job, your wickedness is, is hurting others. That's what he's telling Job right here. And thy righteous, righteousness may profit, may profit the son of man. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they, speaking about men, make the oppression to cry. <clears throat> now, what he's talking about right here, men who cry, remember I said there's another kind of crying? Well, Pharaoh cried to the Lord. But he didn't cry to the Lord because he wanted to be born again. He cried to the Lord because the Lord took his baby. That's why he was crying to the Lord. He wasn't crying and saying, Lord, forgive me or Lord, accept me. That's not the kind of crying he was doing. He was crying because the Lord took his child. You understand what I'm saying? All right. They weren't, there's a different kind of crying. You cry to the Lord for mercy to help you, you know. But then there's a cry where uh, the Lord has done something. And you're, you're, you're just crying out to him like, why would you do this? You know. You understand what I'm saying? They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. Now, right here it says the arm of the mighty. This is the devil. Now, every, every time I've, we've read, it says almighty. When it says almighty, we're talking about God. But in Revelations, in Revelations, the devil is called the mighty. Not the almighty, but he is called the mighty. So this is the devil, and that's what he's being called. But he's not being called the almighty. Remember that. The crying out of these men isn't, like I said, it isn't to worship God. It's because they have trouble. They've gotten them themselves in too, with the Lord. Verse 10. <clears throat> but none saith, Where is God my maker? Who giveth songs in the night? Who teaches, teaches us more than the beast of the earth and making us wiser than the fowls of the heaven? But it's saying these these men aren't asking where is God. They're, it says, "But none saith." So they're they're not asking where is God so he, they can comfort him, comfort them, as it said at the verse. It says, "But none saith." So when they say well, where is God, they're not calling on to the Lord for comfort because it's saying they this is not this is what they didn't say, and they also it says they didn't ask for more wisdom than as animals, like it says up here. They didn't ask for that. Because the Lord does give us more wisdom than animals. But that's not what they were asking for. They didn't do that. In verse 12, There they cried, but none giveth answer, because of the pride of evil men. These evil men cried out, but they had no answer, is what it says. Because their heart was in the wrong place. Everything has to do with our heart. Remember that. Everything. Religious people, Christians, on Sunday morning. That's it. Christians are Christians 24-7. Remember that. That's the difference between us and religious people. We live for the Lord 
like every day is Sunday. Verse 13. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. So God is saying he doesn't hear the wicked men, which that's what I tell lost people. You see, I see people who are lost. They're not born again. Remember, the Bible says you know them by their fruits. Okay, I, if I see somebody and I know they're not born again, it's, it's not I'm judging them. It's just I go by the Word of God. The Word of God, this is the fruits of, the, of a born again Christian. All right? We have fruits. Right? You either have fruits that are wicked or you have fruits that are good from God. So if I see someone, and I've, I've, I've told people, you know, uh, I'm sorry, but the only prayer that God is going to hear from you since you're not born again is the prayer of repentance, that you're wanting to come to Him and repent of the way you're living and you want to give Him your life. That's the only prayer He hears from a sinner. But if you're lost, God cannot hear you. Why? It's very simple. Who's the mediator between us and God? Jesus. And where does Jesus have to be for him, for God to hear? He's got to be right here. Now, if you're not a born-again Christian, you don't have the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus. It's pretty easy to understand that, right? If you do not have the Holy Spirit, if you're not a born-again Christian, you do not have the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, your prayers are going no further than that ceiling. There's a lot of lost people who don't know that, though. All right? There's a lot of lost people that don't know that. They really think God is hearing them. But the Bible plainly says, and it's pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty simple. I didn't make this hard, did I? It's real simple. You need the Holy Spirit for God to hear you. You need the, the mediator, and the mediator is Jesus. So if you don't have Jesus, you don't have a mediator. So how is God going to hear you? Like I said, the only... Prayer that God hears from a sinner is someone who's repentant. Verse 14. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him. Therefore trust thou in him. Elihu is telling Job, even though you can't see God now like you want to, because remember, Job has been wanting to talk to God, remember? You will see him on judgment day. And like I said a while ago, yes, Job is going to see the Lord on Judgment Day, but it's not going to be for salvation. Job is a man of God. He's got his judgment already. He's justified. So it's not going to, he said, you are going to see God, but it won't be to see if you're born again or saved. Verse 15. But now, because it is not so, he has visited in his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremities. Therefore, though Job open his mouth in vain, he multiplieth words without knowledge. And again, what he's saying here, he's calling Job a fool. He's opening his mouth without knowledge. He's saying things that are in the flesh. You know, in the flesh, we can always say foolish things. When we're in the flesh, <coughs> we have no wisdom when we're in the flesh, okay? Chapter 36, verse 1. Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. Remember in chapter 33, uh, verse 6, Elihu said, I am that mediator. He's not acting as a mediator because he's saying, I will tell you. This is not from God. He said, I will tell you. So what Elihu is saying here, I'm going to give you my wisdom. And our wisdom, we have none. Verse 3, I will... Fetch my knowledge from afar, and I will ascribe righteous to my Maker. I will show you the righteousness of God. That's what he's saying. Like I said, Elihu is up and down. He says things that are good, then he says things that are... Verse 4, For truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect, his knowledge is with thee. Elihu is speaking very highly of himself. Now, if anybody could speak highly of themselves, it could be them. But what did, they, what did they do when other men came to worship them? They, they backed them up. They said, oh, no, don't worship me. There's only one you worship. That's God. Okay, this is wisdom. This is, these men did know a lot, but they didn't esteem themselves up like, like this guy. A man of God will not do that. A man of God will not do that. And I'm sorry to say... A man of God will not accept worship like the Pope. 
They throw flowers and roses to him. They worship that man. They worship him. People worship him. And if he was a man of God, he would not allow that to happen. If he was a man of God. Oh, they, uh, and they do that to men who are called fathers in the Catholic Church. Where the Bible plainly says not to give no one the title as father. You have a father, your spiritual father. And then you got your father that you were born by. On earth. But it plainly says not to call him by your father spiritually. And that's what they do. And they do stand at the door so you can kiss their hands. These, I'm sorry gentlemen and women. This is not a man of God. A man of God will say, no, I'm nobody. I'm a nobody. If I have any good in me, if I preach good or I teach good, it's because of the Holy Spirit that's in me, period. That's what a man of God will do. So these men who allow them to kiss their hand, and especially the Pope, I mean, I've, that, is just, that, is, I mean, that is just plain worship. They worship that man, and he allows it. Here, from verse 5 to 12, he's speaking about Christians. Okay. Behold, God is mighty and despises, despises not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. The Lord will receive anyone who calls on him. The Lord will receive anyone who calls on him. Verse 6, He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He doesn't bless the wicked, but he blesses the righteous. All right. Verse 7, he withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doeth establish them forever, and they are exalted. <clears throat> Elihu, in these verses, telling Job how God deals with righteousness. How we'll be sitting on thrones like kings. I can't wait for that time. I can't wait for that time, but that's what he's saying here. And it's going to last forever. Uh, verse 8. And if they be bound in fetters and be holding in cords of affliction, then he shows them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He opens also their ear to the, to the discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. <clears throat> if they are enslaved, if they're tangled up in trouble, then he points out their trouble that they're in. All right, He shows them what's right and he tells them to repent for their unbeliefs right here. That's what he's telling them. The thing about this world today is everybody. Everybody wants something to believe in. Everyone does. That's why you, you got people in these cults. You even got devil worshipers. But they just want something to believe in and that's what they chose. But people want something to believe in. And we, the Christians of God, the born again Christians... We have what they need, the right thing. And like I said before, and I just I have to repeat it because it's true, the servants of the devil are doing a better job than we are. We are not out there. We are not out there witnessing like we should be. Because if we were, more people would be getting saved. More people, would, just like in the Bible, when I said people were saved daily. Why were they saved daily? Because the churches was in homes. Back then, the churches was in the neighborhood. Remember that. That's why people were getting saved daily. And they're also getting saved daily because they didn't have a time. Okay, we're going to start at, at, at uh, 10.30, but at 12 o'clock, they didn't have a time. If the preacher wanted to preach for hours, he preached for hours. And people would listen. It's not like that today. We have a time limit on how much a preacher can preach to us. Verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they listen and start obeying him, they will prosper. Doesn't mean material things. It can mean that, but it doesn't always mean material. And they will live rejoicing in the Lord. This is what it's saying. But, but if they obey not, they shall perish. Remember, I told you this is these verses are for Christians. But verse 12 says, But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. Now we're talking about the righteous if they don't repent and obey. They will lose the battle that they're confronted with 
for not having the word of God to stand on, like Ephesians chapter six. You know, Ephesians chapter six it tells us gives us the armor of God. But even though he gives us all his armor, what does he tell us to do? To stand. He didn't tell us to go out there and fight. We don't go out there and fight. I've I've taught that. He gives us all his armor, but then he says stand. And that's what we do. We stand. We stand on the word of God. James chapter 5, it plainly says the best way to fight the devil, if you want to fight the devil, don't do it like some of these religions where they're screaming and hollering at them. We bind you and we do this to you and blah, blah, blah. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says to do that. The Bible says if you want to fight the devil, the way to fight him is to get closer to God. That's the way you fight the devil, is by getting closer to the Lord. Amen? Now, he's speaking about lost people. Now, I just told you he was speaking about Christians. Now, he, he's going to be speaking about lost people in the next two verses. <clears throat> but the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he blindeth them. Just like it says in chapter 35, verse 9 and 10, they won't seek God for help. They'll go to a bank if they're in financial problem. They'll go to a bank to borrow money. If they're depressed, they'll go to a psychiatrist. Do you hear what I'm saying? They go somewhere else besides the Lord for help. They might go to a friend. And they might go to a priest or a pastor. Instead of seeking God first. There's nothing wrong with going to your pastor. There's nothing wrong with them. But in everything, in everything, even in illness... Even in illness, we should pray to God first. God, please heal me or please heal whoever. Sometimes God will. It depends on what? His will, right? It's His will. And if He doesn't, then we say, okay, Lord, then we pray for doctors. That He'll use the doctors to heal me. But we first go to the Lord on everything. If you're sick, go to the Lord. If you need money, go to the Lord. Lord, I, I'm real tight. Now, you know, go to the Lord. If you need money, go to the Lord. I already know what he's going to tell you because he says it over and over. And people, remember our way, God's ways is not our ways. God says, if you, if you need money, <laughs> he says to give money. Amen? I mean, <laughs> what? I don't have any money. You want me to give money so I can give money? <laughs> you know, I'm broke already. But that's what God says. He says, if you need, give. Just to always remember, God's ways are not our ways. Verse 14, They die in youth, and their lives is among the unclean. Meaning the lost. Their lives are among the lost. He delivered the poor in his affliction, and opens their ears in oppression. He'll free the righteous from their troubles, and he tells them, Let those who have ears, let them hear. Tonight, let those who have ears, let them hear. That's what we're here for. We have to have ears, spiritual ears, to understand what God says. If we don't have spiritual ears, this will be so foreign to us, we will not understand it for nothing. Even so, would he have removed thee out of the strait into a broad place where there is no uh, straightness? And that which should be set on thy table should be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled the, the judgment of the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold on thee. Elihu is saying, I just told you what God will do to the righteous. But, but the Lord is doing what he does to the wicked. He's condemning Job, like I said. He's condemning Job. And we know that Job is innocent. But he's condemning Job. And then instead of, instead of doing Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, where it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. It doesn't sound like Elihu or, his, or those three friends was comforting Job whatsoever. But this is what God says. Verse 4 of, the, of Second Corinthians is, Who comforteth us? Who comforted us in all our tribulation. All. We gotta when we see that word all, we need to comprehend what all means. 
He said, in all your tribulations, I will comfort you. Amen? 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 <laughs> and He will. That we might be able to comfort them which are in trouble. So just like He comforted me during that time, now I can comfort someone else. What was that in 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 